That sounds so cool. And looking at them under a microscope, I, I can just imagine what they look like. They have so many legs and I bet they have a really interesting face. That is very cool. OK, enough about aphids because I'm getting distracted. <laughs> We're going to get started. Alison, I'll just introduce our lesson today and then we'll get started with your story. OK, okay. yes. OK, so welcome to our Natural Scotland week. Um, and this is our second lesson of today. If you would like to learn all about geology, you are welcome to watch our lesson from this morning and the recording will be up as soon as possible after this lesson. Today, we are going to talk about Scotland's beautiful nature. Now, we know that Scotland is renowned across the world for its natural beauty and its natural history. Tourists flock here from all over the world because they want to see our beautiful natural environment. And those are just some of the beautiful animals that we have living in Scotland. And we were talking about some of those um, just earlier while we were waiting for you, Alison, we were talking about our favourite Scottish animal. And I'm just noticing that there's a seal on there too. And I completely forgot about seals. So I will add those to my favourite and puffins as well. Now, we need to learn about nature so that we understand where our place is in the environment and we understand how important every animal is and every plant and every other insect species, even aphids, are to our natural environment. Because if we know about the natural environment, then we will care more and we need to look after our beautiful natural environment because it looks after us. And now I am so pleased and relieved to welcome Alison Galbraith, who is a storyteller and author. And Alison has a beautiful story for us today and an activity for you all. So I hope you're comfortable and you're all ready for our story. Alison, I'd like to invite you to take it away. It's all yours. Hello, everybody. I heard you speaking about aphids. Somebody's class has been looking at aphids. My story is all about aphid eaters. And <laughs> Do you know who this is, everybody? It's not a real one. It's just a finger puppet, but it's a little bird. And who knows the name of this type of bird? We see them out in the gardens, in the trees, outside the schools, probably at home you see them, and I can see somebody typing up blue tit, that's right. So I know we've got some nursery classes with us today, so I'm just warming my voice up before the, the story. Who knows uh, a song or a poem about two little blue tits? Who knows the one that goes, two little dicky birds sitting on a wall, one called Peter, one called Paul. Fly away, Peter, fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter, come back, Paul. That's one of the earliest nursery rhymes I think I ever learned. Because all of us, when we look out the window or step outside, see and hear birds. They are everywhere around us. But do you know, birds did not always make nests to lay their eggs and raise their chicks in. No, no, no. And I'm going to tell you the story called Magpie's Nest about how all of the birds in the world, not just Scotland, the world, learnt to make nests. It goes like this. Once upon a time, a long time ago, the birds did not lay their eggs in nests. No, they didn't. They would lay their eggs anywhere, on the grass, on the ground. And then elephants would come along. Well, not elephants in Scotland. Way back then, woolly mammoths would come along, stomp, 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 and stomp on the birds' eggs. And they would lay them on rocks, you know, hard rocks all in the countryside and on the hills. And they would put an egg on and boop, the egg would roll off in the wind and smash. It wasn't a good way to raise your chicks by laying your eggs here, there and everywhere. So one day a pair of magpies decided we'll make a home 
for our eggs. And now I'm going to show you my story stick, which shows you how the magpies made their nest. Can everybody see the story stick? Then this is how magpies laid their nests and eggs in them. They started like this. The magpies flew down into the forest and they picked up big sticks. You see them everywhere we have trees. They wove the sticks into a strong round platform of sticks. Can you all see that on the story stick? And when they'd finished weaving and constructing their platform of strong sticks, Magpie sat down on it and went, ouch, oh yeah, that hurts. The sticks were poking up into the magpie's bottom. Oh, said Magpie, that's too uncomfortable. Well, a bird that had been watching, the crows, they looked at that strong nest and they said, that's brilliant, Magpie. We'd like to construct a home just like that. And so the crows flew away, craw, craw, and they made their nests of strong sticks like that. Well, Magpie thought again and said, I'll try something different. The two magpies flew down to the river and they picked up beakfuls of mud, soft, gloopy mud from the riverbank. And they flew back into their tree and they patted the mud all about the tree until they'd made a little bowl of mud. And Magpie sat in it and went, Ugh, I've got mud on my feathers. Oh no, this mud's too sticky and mucky and dirty. I can't have a nest made of mud. But another bird who had been watching, it was the song thrush with her lovely spotty feathers. She sat down in the magpie's muddy bowl and she pushed her beautiful feathery chest into the mud and shaped that mud just the right shape for her body. And when the sun shone on the mud, it hardened it into a little clay bowl with twigs all about. And Thrush said, this is the nest for me. That's lovely. Thank you, magpie. But Magpie wasn't happy yet. Magpie kept flying all about. She picked up twigs, she picked up straw, and then she made a little nest of twigs and straw, carefully woven all about. It was pretty, just like this little nest. But when Magpie tried to sit in it, she realised it's too small. I can't sit in that. I'm a big bird. But one bird who was watching, it was, look, I have one in my pocket. It was. It was the blackbird. And the blackbird said, oh, I love that nest. Thank you very much, magpie. I'll lay my eggs in that nest. That'll do for me to bring up my chicks. Thank you, magpie. And so the blackbird makes a nest just like that straw and twigs woven neatly together. Well, Magpie still needed to make her nest for her chicks. So off she flew and she picked up big sticks again. She flew through the trees and the woods and into gardens and over school buildings. And she made a big, strong, square platform. Can you see that one? Great big weavings of sticks and twigs and she did it high in a pine tree. There's the pine tree and the pine cone and there's a chick fallen out of the nest above. Here we are. Magpie says, here it is. This is a good nest. It's big and roomy, plenty of room to put my eggs. And she sat down on that big platform and one of the twigs sprang out and poked her. Oh, Oh, she said, ouch, ouch, that hurt. That's not the nest for me. It's too pokey. But there was a big bird watching, big bird with big white owls that said, to wit, to woo, magpie, 
what a beautiful, strong platform. I shall make my nest just like that, thank you. Can you guess who it was? To wit, to woo. It was the owl. The owls flew away high into a pine tree and they made a big, strong platform just like that. Well, another little bird, and I've got one. I've got one of those little ones that you... Oh. Do you know which bird that is? Everybody sees these out of the window round their houses. Sparrow, that's right. The sparrow looked at this big platform and said, I like that. I like all the bits sticking out. And so the sparrow flew away and made a little nest that looked like that. Do you think that's a neat, tidy nest? Or is that a scruffy slapdash? Bits poking out everywhere, chicks falling out everywhere. That was how Sparrow made her nest. She just took bits of twig and shoved them here and shoved them there. And do you know, to this day, sparrows still make the scruffiest slapdash little nests you've ever seen. <laughs> right, thank you, Sparrow. <laughs> She's still cheeping. Magpie still hadn't made her nest, so what am I going to do now, she said. Well, she went down gathering twigs, grass, straw, and then it began to rain. Oh, the sky went dark, the rain came splashing down, thundering down. I bet you get wet in the rain sometimes. There's the rain. And Magpie said, I can't let my chicks get wet in all this weather. I must build a cover over the top of my new nest. And so she began to weave all the sticks and twigs into a beautiful little ball. Can you see that little ball? Well, that's what she made. And then she poked her head in and thought, mm, it's too small for a big bird like me to go in. Two beautiful birds, long tailed tits, flew up to Magpie's little woven ball and they said, oh, but we can fit inside there, Magpie. And so the little long tailed tits took lichen and mosses and they poked them with their beaks into all the gaps in the little ball until they'd made a beautiful domed ball all plugged up with moss to keep it dry and snug for their chicks. We'll have that one, thank you very much, Magpie. Well, Magpie carried on. She flew all about the woodlands and the houses, collecting everything she could find. Can you see what's in the bag? She collected feathers. She collected sheep's wool. She collected bits of cardboard that she found lying about. Dried leaves, fluffy things, colourful things, wool and sticks and twigs until Magpie had made a stunning big nest. But when she sat in her nest, happy with its roof and its twigs, she said it's still a bit scratchy in here. It's still not comfy enough to lay my eggs. Then she had a good idea. She used her beak and she plucked some feathers out of her chest and she lined her nest with soft, fluffy, warm feathers. A whole flock of birds watched this. They were the chittery, chattery starlings. They all bounced up and down and said, that looks like a comfy nest, magpie. And they flew away and made their own nests and filled them. Do you see that one? just like that, with soft, beautiful feathers. And to this very day, starlings make the coziest, softest, most comfortable nests. Well, Magpie carried on, tweaking her nest and finding little bits and pieces to line the nest with and to make it windproof, rainproof and very cozy for her to lay her eggs and rear her chicks. But two birds were still watching Magpie make her nest. They were my favourite birds, the doves. And the two collared doves sat watching Maggie and they sang out, hoo 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 Now, who can speak bird language? 
do you know what the doves were saying? They were saying, make two nests, Maggie, make two. Magpie looked at the doves and went, no, I'm only making one nest for my chicks, doves. But the doves just repeated themselves. Make two nests, Maggie, make two. Can you say that in your classrooms? Have a go. One, two, three. Make two nests, Maggie. Make two. And they said it again. Can you say it again? Make two nests, Maggie. Make two. Will you all call her doves in your classroom? Maggie, listen to the doves. Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. Until she could listen no more, she said to the doves, go and make your own nests, doves. I'm exhausted. I need to go into my nest and look after my chicks. I'll see you next year when we make our nests all over again. Snip, snap, snout. That's that story all told out. And that's the end of the story, The Magpie's Nest. Have you heard that story before? Well, it's a very old English folk tale, and that's been told for hundreds of years. I wonder if you know about birds in the past and what people thought of them. They made up different names for them. And I wonder, my dad used to call greenfinches wee linties. That was his pet name for them. I wonder if you can think of anybody in your family, maybe your mum or dad, or your gran and your grandpa? Do they have any different names for the birds? Maybe we could put that on the chat. Let me know in class. Do you know any names for birds? So, for example, I'm just thinking, who? what other birds do I have um, here? Well, there's a bird I don't have, um, and it's called Robin Redbreast. That's a little name for the robin. I do, I did have a little robin. It's flown off. No, here, here's my Robin. <laughs> so that's a little name, Robin Redbreast. I'm wondering, going to have a look at the chat. Can you think of any other old fashioned names that go with our old stories? Oh, here we are. There's lots coming in here. That's lovely. Very good. Jenny Wren. Yes. And, and Blue Tit. Absolutely right. That is lovely. So birds were important to our grandparents and the people before us. They watched the birds to know what the weather was doing because the birds would build their nests at the time of year when the weather was good. Like now, this is the time to rear their chicks in the good weather. And perhaps you would like to tell that story too in class. I think you probably would. Um, I have sent Andrea, Keep Scotland Beautiful, have sent you the story to your teachers. But you don't have to tell the story exactly the way I told it. What you could do in school is look for the birds around your school. Oh, that's M Mrs. McGregor has said something interesting. Some of our grandparents use Scottish words for birds like craw. For the crow. That's right, Mrs. McGregor. Crows are lovely. There's another Scottish word for crows as well. Very old fashioned. But maybe you've heard people say corbies, a corby and crows. That's a very popular one. I think there's a really good song about crows, isn't there? Who remembers singing three wee crows sat upon a wall? <laughs> and there is Mackerel gull is a tern. Oh, well, I didn't know that, Katrina. That's very, that's a, a real name, a tern, a mackerel gull. Oh, because they ate mackerel, the fish. And, and remember the doves at the end of the story. Make two nests, Maggie. Make two. Mrs. McGregor, do your class know a very Scottish word for a pigeon or a dove? Who knows what we call a dove or a pigeon? While you're thinking about that, Mrs. Frame has said a peewit. 
that's a lapwing. That's a lovely one. Kerry Thompson, a sparrow. And what did Kerry say? Is that and oh, they're coming in thick and fast. You do know lots about them. A sparrow, a wee buggy, a spuggy. I've not heard that. A wee buggy. That's lovely. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Um, there are lots of words coming in. That's great because birds have been around for probably longer than human beings have been around. Mrs. McGregor, thank you. You think that a dove, the Scottish word, is a do. A do, that's right. That's funny. I didn't realise until just now, maybe it's called a do, because when you say the word do, it sounds a bit like the noise the bird makes. Do, that's beautiful. Some people keep pigeons, don't they? Racing pigeons. And you see them flying about. That's a lovely thing to do. A do. There are lots of people have got do. Mrs. Hippolito and Miss McCrack, Rona McCracken. Do. Hello, everybody. A Jennifer Flett. Do. That's it. Do, do. And they do sing, don't they? Do, 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 do. Well, what do you think about making your own story sticks? If you write down the birds that you see around the school when you're out for lunch today, maybe it's gulls, maybe you'll see the starlings. Do you remember? The starlings make very soft, comfortable nests. Sparrows, you'll hear them cheeping loudly. Um, and the blue tits, if you look carefully. And we're going to show you some birds' nests and what the birds that go with them. And you can do that at school. List all the birds you see around your school, and then you can look up what kind of nest do they make and have a go at making your own story stick. Once you have the stick, you can remember all the birds that come next. And I'll just put the stick down for a moment and show you some of the materials I use to make my stick. Here we are, lots of scrap bits and pieces, pipe cleaners, ribbons, some plastic eggs from Easter. I'm very sorry they're plastic. And um, conkers, oh, you could paint one of those to look like a bird's nest. All bits and pieces. And I even went out on a nature walk and collected some bits and pieces that had fallen from trees. So I only took the things that had come off. I didn't snap branches because that's not right. So there was bits of pine tree that I found on the ground. Oh, and look at that. Do you know, there's a beautiful bit of moss. So it's all dried out, green moss. Do you remember in the story who used the moss to plug the holes in the dome. It was the beautiful birds called long-tailed tits. They're very pretty bird. If you have a bird feeder at the school, you might be lucky to see them. They come in a little flock and they have long tails and they're very pretty. So they use that, so I picked that up. I found lots of pine cones lying about. In fact, I found one pine cone, everybody. Look at that one. Can you see what's happened to that? I think a squirrel has come along and nibbled the pine nuts inside the pine cone. There's where a squirrel nibbled it. So it's not just birds that like pine cones. You can find feathers. Well, I think I found that one in my craft box. <laughs> so you don't need to do that. But all sorts of bits and pieces. I found some sheep's wool in one of the fences where I was walking and I dried that out. But you need to ask your it, maybe it, you should let an adult find the sheep's wool just in case you have an allergy to the um, to the sheep's wool. Some people do lanolin. It's not good for some people. So there you are. That's for your teachers to do. And amazing, I would... Alison. Thank you for I... showing us your story stick. Yeah, I would love to see what the schools make, if they can do that and tell the story with the birds where you Absolutely. live. Absolutely. So 
in the folder of resources, there is some advice on making a story stick and we would love to see yours. Now, Alison mentioned some slides of nests and we're saving that for Thursday's lesson because we have a bit more to say about nests and birds then. So please, if you'd like to learn more about nests, join us on Thursday and you can show us your story sticks. I would just say that maybe if you'd like some wool, you can ask a local farmer to give you some because we shouldn't go on to farmer's land where livestock is kept without permission. We know that. And also, if you're picking lichen or moss, please make sure that you pick it up off the ground where it's fallen um, and don't remove it from trees because we know that lichen and moss are a very important part of our ecosystem and if we pick it all off a tree we could cause some damage okay so and also if you take um, more than you need you can just go put it back where you found it because the birds and the squirrels and all the other insects will be very happy to make use of it so if you're going to, I hope you enjoyed today's story. I know I certainly did. And we're so grateful to Alison for your perseverance today um, and for your brilliant storytelling as always. And also we're very grateful to the Scottish Book Trust um, for helping us to have your time today and for working in partnership with us. Um, please have a look at the resources. We'd love to see your story sticks. I will just tell you a couple more things and then we're going to go. I can sort my own self out here. There we go. So yes, please send us photos of your story stick. Tell us what you thought of today's story. Um, let us know too if you know any other stories about birds or nests, any other folk stories that you've heard of and that you enjoy telling. Um, and say hello if you have any photographs you'd like to share with us or you'd like to um, ask a question about the story that we had today, you can find us on social media at KSB Scotland. You can find Alison at her Twitter handle there, um, Ali Galbraith. And also, as always, if you have anything you want to ask us or send us, please use our email address, ecoschools at keepscotlandbeautiful.org. Teachers, if you send us a photograph, could you please let us know if it's okay to share this in our assembly on Friday? I hope you can join us tomorrow for our lesson again in the morning. And if you missed today's earlier lesson, you can find the recording online very shortly this afternoon. And as always, I hope you can join us on Friday for our assembly. Thank you for your patience today, everyone. And thank you for your lovely feedback. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And that's bye for now.